What's up techies? Cam here from Coder Career. For those of you who are new, I'm an ex-technical recruiter who now works as a software engineer and I use my experience as a recruiter and my now experience as an engineer to get help give you the best of both worlds uh, and give a useful bit of career advice. So one of my biggest flaws both professionally and personally to be honest is that I really dwell on my mistakes and I can be quite regretful. So whilst I'm trying to fix that, again, both in a professional and, uh, and personal context, I figured it would be a good idea to at least exploit it for a video while I'm still very regretful about certain things. Uh, so I want to discuss the biggest mistakes that I actually made myself while learning to code. So these are specific to me. Uh, I would be happy to do a video down the line about general ones, but these are mistakes that I made and hopefully uh, if you're watching you can relate to this as well, no matter where you're on your journey, uh, it, because we're always learning, whether you literally wrote your first line last week or you're a senior developer now, if you're going to be a coder, you need to always be learning. So saying that, yes, you should always be learning. However, flaw number one is learning too much at once. So the path to becoming a commercial engineer is very complex and tough to navigate, which is obviously why I created this channel. I felt like there was a niche that wasn't really being served there. Uh, and one of the main issues is there's a ton of different tools, resources, etc., that you can use. Uh, primarily what I mean by that is you can use a lot of different languages, frameworks, tools uh, to basically get the job done. And, you know, they all have their advantages and disadvantages. But what I'm trying to say here is that you need to uh, you need to pick one. So in my situation, I ended up getting very confused because I tried, I tried to learn JavaScript and Python at the same time. So trying to remember two different syntax structures when you're new to programming, which I was, uh, as a whole. So it wasn't even like they were new languages to me. It's an absolute disaster. You're just going to end up getting stuck, and, and I did. Uh, so what I would suggest in that situation is picking one. For me personally, eventually I realized that I needed to do that, and I pitched JavaScript. Uh, and I didn't actually pick up Python until I'd already landed on uh, landed in an engineering role. Uh, I've said this before, but I would always recommend learning either JavaScript or Python to start you off with. Uh, it will put you down slightly different paths, but it's kind of the same means to the end, uh, really. So I I'm still working on a bit of Python in my spare time when I have some. Uh, so that that that's my kind of process at the moment. But basically, to summarize, you need to pick one thing and get good at it, especially if you want to do this thing professionally. You need to consider where your value add is going to be, and you don't want to be disrupting your learning by learning a load of different things. Now, you should learn about the ecosystem within the language you choose to learn. Just don't go with the like scattergun approach and try and learn different things at once. It's just not going to work. So point number two is an interesting one, and this is something that actually looking back is really obvious, but it might not be if you've just started to code, uh, and that's not learning source control, which if you're not familiar is basically ways we manage different versions of projects and merge in new features uh, and, and pass checks, etc. So I had a GitHub account from pretty much day one I learned to code, uh, but I was terrified of Git, uh, mainly because of the command line interface, which I, again, could almost be a sub point here, don't be afraid of the command line. It's not that bad. Uh, you can equally damage your system using the graphical interface, so don't be too afraid of the command line. So I used to actually copy and paste my code manually and put it in GitHub, literally like like a Google Drive or something, just copying my uh, copying it as, as text and, and just dropping it in there. So it, that's inefficient and basically defeats the purpose of having a remote repository. So it's a little bit embarrassing to admit, but look, we all make mistakes, right? So learning source control, specifically Git, uh, will help you develop more complex projects in your own time. And if you're confident enough, it's actually going to give you quite an edge over junior candidates. A lot of people are trying to learn lots of things and some boot camps don't focus on it particularly well. If you learn the more complex commands like Git Rebase, for instance, that can really give you an edge because you'd be amazed how much you, you just need to be using uh, Git in, inside out uh, in, a, in a professional role. And it's just so helpful if you make a mistake from winding things back uh, or merging new features. Uh, the more you can save a senior dev on your team's time when you join as a junior, the faster you'll progress as well because they can teach you the more advanced uh, features and they don't have to stick around teaching you version control and that sort of thing. Small point here, small regret is just that I didn't get up and running with a quality IDE. Uh, I was just using various different text editors. So if you're not if you're not familiar with an IDE, I believe it stands for uh, Integrated Development Environment. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments if anyone's watching. Uh, so um, there's nothing wrong per se with using a basic text editor or, or like an online one, like the built-in ones of Free Code Camp, um, for example. It's honestly just better to get up and up and running with like a industry standard one, though. Uh, so I've always used VS Code uh, since I started coding more seriously, and I wish I'd use it from day one because actually. 
it really, if you install the right things through Marketplace, it really helps you code using stuff like linters. So if you're not familiar, that cleans up your code, adds the correct indentation, makes it look right. Uh, so I would recommend recommend doing that. But as well, there's things like uh, renaming symbols. So you're able to rename variables and that will take effect throughout the workspace. So um, there's a lot of basically hacks to make, to make coding so much quicker. Uh, and I would highly recommend that totally free open source um a really great product uh, actually so I'm, I'm, i've always been really impressed with bs code so if you if you learn to code and you're just doing it on the online ides uh, like web-based ones then try and get vs code if you can because it will really really uh, accelerate your learning okay so my next regret is that i wasn't focused enough on css so CSS, yes, it is specific to web developers, front-enders actually specifically uh, within that. So I know that's a subset of a subset, but I think the majority of people watching this uh, will actually have to deal with it at some point. Web development makes up the vast majority of engineering jobs in the current tech landscape. So chances are, especially as a junior, you will have to touch some CSS, and I think that's a good thing. Um, languages like JavaScript allow you to build really exciting things, uh, so people end up skipping over CSS uh, after they sort of like tackle the basics, um, and that was something I did. So it was a pretty major mistake, uh, especially as someone who mainly does front-end work, to basically ignore um, the more advanced features of CSS. So if I'd had my time again, I'd learn in much greater depth about a different approach to styling and the different kind of frameworks you can use for styling. So uh, SCSS, SAS, Tailwind, um, style components within React I've been using recently and I, I really enjoy. Um, so once you're able to use that and, and you can quickly implement the more advanced features uh, like Flexbox and, and Grid, it, it just becomes an absolute lifesaver and you find a lot of fiddly bits in front-end development um, are just it can be solved by just knowing your CSS inside out. So I really recommend CSS Tricks uh, as a website that will be down in the description. Uh, also as well, I'd recommend playing two fun little games called uh, Flexbox Froggy uh, and Grid Garden. So this is um, this is one where you really just have to train yourself to think in Flexbox and Grid terms. I won't go too into depth in this video, but uh, you've almost got to treat it like, uh, like lifting weights or something. You do it once a week and then you'll gradually improve uh, to the point where, um, you know, you, you can your your performance is far better uh, than it would have been um, you know weeks ago and you'll find that with flexbox with froggy and grid garden except you're training your brain rather than training your muscles my final proper regret is that i actually took way too long to take the plunge some new coders decide to go all in too early they shovel their chips all in and others too late it's pretty hard to hit that sweet spot uh, i definitely fit into the latter group so um i, I left this point to last because it, it is a really difficult thing to tell when the right time is because it, it is a big risk to start looking for a job. Um, but I'd already been coding for two years, uh, basically by the time I'd actually got my first job. So I, I actually think with a more disciplined learning schedule, I probably could have done it a year earlier. Um, had I also as well done that disciplined learning schedule and, and entirely focused my learning towards uh, commercial viability instead of just messing about. It is fun to mess about, but if you're serious about making this, this career, you basically need to study up on what are the most commercial languages which is uh, frameworks and tools and how can how can how can I use them if you are delaying the start of your job search and you've already built out a number of projects say four or five fully fledged web applications ask yourself why you haven't started your job search the worst people can say is no just make sure that you have at least a bit of confidence because even if you fail a technical interview it's going to be a great experience you shouldn't take failure to heart push yourself out there the worst any hiring manager can say is no and trust me People in this industry tend to be quite friendly, nice people and always want to give a junior a leg up. And if they don't want to give a junior a leg up and they're rude to you, good, you shouldn't have worked that place anyway. You're going to find a going to find a role that suits you more. So definitely don't be afraid to put yourself out there once you, once you feel technically ready. Uh, and being technically ready can happen much sooner than you think. And a bonus point, if you are learning some cloud services, um, if you set up auto-scaling instances on AWS, uh, make sure that you know the proper process for shutting them down before you uh, go away on um, a five-day holiday. Don't check your AWS account. Don't have any access to a computer. I didn't do that. Uh, definitely not. Definitely didn't come back to, <laughs> to a bit of a bill. Could have been worse, um, but it still cost me 50 quid. So that's about 75 US dollars. Uh, so not ideal. Um, but yeah, uh, just be careful with your cloud services and shut down any instances that you're not using. 
like I know this doesn't really fit in the theme of the video, but um, don't make my mistake. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks so much for watching, listening to what I have to say. Um, let me know uh, if, if you want to hear about anything in particular in the future. Um, I have a few ideas. I'm a little bit less pressed for time now. Um, as you can maybe see from my background, uh, I've moved house, I've moved back, uh, moved, moved to Scotland. Uh, so I'm very happy up here. Um, so I've got a bit more free time now that I'm not like totally living in boxes or, or planning a move uh, 450 miles north uh, of where I was living. Uh, I'm going to try and make a video at least once a month, hopefully more. Uh, I can't promise anything though. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, I think I've got 10 subscribers now. So thank you to the 10 of you. Um, just 993. 9,990 to go um, for the big million. Anyway, happy coding and see you next time.